The Asian Organic Colorants Project is an offshoot from a long-term collaboration with our Chinese colleagues at the Denghuang Academy at Mogao, one of the sites along the ancient Silk Road. The GCI has been working with the Academy for a number of years to address conservation issues at the site. That effort has included an extensive, multi-year project in Cave 85 focused on the conservation of the wall paintings. What's an important discovery in, in the nation? The conservators that were working on these wall paintings noticed that there had been organic colorants used as well as inorganic colorants. Now the way they could tell this was of the shading and glazes that were applied to the wall paintings. These techniques added some dimension and beauty to the wall paintings. Organic colorants are materials that are prepared from plants, roots, uh, bark, and even insects. One of the problems with organic colorants is that they tend to be light fugitive, which means upon exposure to light, especially sunlight, they become damaged. We need to understand which pigments are used, which organic colorants are used, so that we can better preserve the wall paintings. Developing an understanding of the organic paint materials used in the ancient wall paintings to further the conservation work is one of the objectives of the Asian Organic Colorants Project. At the same time, this research within the caves highlights the relevant lighting conditions, temperature, relative humidity, and overall cave microenvironment to satisfy the visitors' needs and to reach our ultimate goal, to preserve the wall paintings. The conservators working on Cave 85 collected a number of samples for analysis to confirm the presence of organic colorants. When we analyzed these samples, we could see that there was a colorant there, but we couldn't determine which colorant was used because we didn't have appropriate reference materials. We know a lot about uh, natural organic dyes and pigments within a European and a especially Latin American context. But uh, we lack a lot of knowledge and experience with respect to the sources which would have been used in uh, China. We have started to study the literature and that uh, has allowed us to uh, draw up a list of some 25, 27 biological sources. We've also been able to establish a good relationship with the Huntington in San Marino, California. At their botanical gardens, they grow numerous plants, some of which are the same plants that we were looking for. By establishing that contact, we've been able to acquire some of the fresh plants for our project. Once we have the raw materials, we bring them back to the laboratory. And from these raw materials or biological sources, we prepare the reference materials. For the uh, laboratory production of the pigments, uh, we try to use as much as possible simple products. Products of which we know that they were also accessible in historic periods. Essentially, you take the material and you boil it in water and from that the colorant comes out. Then with that one extract, we divide it up into four different portions. One portion we use to dye wool, another portion we use to dye silk, a third portion we use to make an organic pigment by precipitating it onto an inorganic support, and the fourth portion we just allow to evaporate, and that is what we call a cake. We will use these reference samples to compare with unknown samples. Then we will be able to identify the colorants used in Mogao. These coupons were prepared with local Dungwan clay and other materials that would have been found at the site at Mogao. Our Mogao colleagues then applied the inorganic materials, the inorganic paint layers to the coupons. They were shipped to us here at the GCI, and then as we prepare the organic paint layers, we will be applying those so that they can be test materials for our project. So essentially what we're trying to create is a test replica of what the wall paintings were like in Mogao. There is, of course, the more modern technology that we are using. Uh, in the preparation procedure, for instance, you can see that the organic pigment 
is precipitated and sedimented with the help of a centrifuge. Here at the GCI, we use high-performance liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry. All of the reference samples that we've prepared will be analyzed by this technique. This will give us detailed information about the components in each biological source that we can then use to identify the biological sources in various media. As we analyze the reference materials with high-performance liquid chromatography, we will be compiling a database of this information. We have a recipe for every reference material that we prepare. And that will be, of course, available to any scholar who will be interested in these materials. We have the reference samples that we've prepared. This is Rubia cordifolia, the pigment. We're working closely with our colleagues at the Dunhuang Academy to make sure that the research benefits the preservation issues at the Mogao grottoes as well as other grottoes throughout China. But the research has broader implications than just Mogao. It'll benefit the preservation and understanding of our cultural heritage wherever these specific organic colorants have been used. <laughs>